Our speaker on this special occasion is Mr. Stephen Golding, president of our Dallas Seminary Foundation. Uh, Steve joined the Seminary Foundation in May of 2012 after a 29-year career in commercial real estate development here in the Dallas area. He's a Dallas native, and Steve and his wife Ann both graduated from Baylor University, were married in 1980, and is also a 2011 DTS grad. Uh, they've been supporters of the seminary for many years, and they are both passionate about the ministry of DTS. In addition to his professional experience, he's faithfully served the church in various roles, and have benefited from his leadership, financial expertise, and communication skills. Uh, they have two married children who reside in Dallas and one granddaughter. Uh, would, uh, Anne, would you stand so we can recognize you this morning as well? Thank you. And Mallory, I just saw you. I, I didn't know you were here. Thank you. Welcome, their daughter. I, I knew her when she couldn't know anybody, okay? <laughs> that young. Would you join me in welcoming Steve Golding to our platform this morning? Well, good morning. Is this on? Yeah. Uh, I do want to make sure we clarify one thing that uh, Dr. Bailey just said. I am not the 2011 DTS grad. My wife is. In fact, when she heard that I was speaking in chapel today, she was horrified. <laughs> I think her words were, what are you going to talk about? I'm not lying. I'm not lying. I, it's, it's a quote. Uh, no, as you've already heard a couple of times, uh, this is the uh, chapel uh, for the Dallas Seminary Foundation. We're celebrating 30 years, and there's nothing like standing up in front of the board of DTS to um, deliver your first chapel address. Uh, we're not going to have a whole lot of theology today. I am going to try to give you uh, some of my best material. If, um, if you don't laugh, I'm sorry. Uh, really, my, my goal here today is to educate and um, inform all of you. Uh, some of you have been around here a long time. You know exactly what the foundation does. Uh, a lot of you students have no idea there's even a foundation here. So we're going to try to cover uh, both of those areas today. I think I have a pretty tough job, actually. Um, we need to acknowledge a group of people that haven't been acknowledged yet, and uh, most of them are sitting right here. We have many guests who have worked with the foundation for many years. They are uh, donors of the seminary, and they have worked with us in a, in a variety of ways, either estate planning, and we're not going to name them all. But if you all would please stand, we would like to welcome you here. Come on. Don't be shy. Uh, we also have a number of current and former uh, foundation board members, uh, some of whom you've already uh, met, but I'd like all of our former and current foundation board members to please stand. I see Mr. Turpin is here. Please, sir, please stand. Uh, finally, the last group, and they don't get enough credit here, I'd like the members of the foundation team and the advancement team to please stand up. You've already met Kim Till, who prayed this morning, but please, all the foundation and advancement team folks, please stand up. <laughs> Today is really a time of celebration. Uh, we're, we're here to say thank you to the people who have been a part of the success of the foundation. Uh, we're here to say thank you to supporters of DTS and the foundation who have allowed us to be part of their lives and their estate planning and charitable gift planning. It's also a time to acknowledge the leaders and board members who have come before us and put us where we are today. And it's a time to say thank you to the many staff members of the foundation over the years who have put in countless hours uh, for your, the benefit of Dallas Seminary and for the benefit of those donors who have sought our help. Finally, though, and most importantly, it's a time to say thank you to God. 
Uh, we see evidence of his hand in our work every day. And that's actually one of the greatest privileges I have of being part of the Dallas Seminary Foundation. I, I could sit here and talk to you for hours about things that have happened at the foundation, communications I've had with people, and I'll share a couple of those here in just a minute. But we see evidence of his work in our foundation every day. And the ultimate result is that he's glorified and his purpose is accomplished. Well, for those of you who don't know, the uh, Dallas Seminary Foundation was founded 30 years ago, 1987. It was uh, formed to provide charitable planning services and to benefit the body of Christ uh, through their financial resources. The foundation was set up to encourage gifts to DTS and other ministries, especially ministries served by DTS alumni. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. The foundation is really the result of many very visionary people, many of whom are sitting right in front of me right now. They saw a need and they sought to fill it. We are truly standing on the shoulders of many who have come before us. So let's uh, get started. Let's take a look. Here's a picture from the um, 20 years ago. This is from the 10-year uh, anniversary of the foundation. Let's, how many of those people do you recognize there? Uh, this gentleman right here is Don Johnson. He was one of the first to explore the concept of the foundation along with Greg Ring and Dr. Campbell. This is Dan Thor. He's a longtime board member. You don't know this guy, do you? <laughs> Dr. Swindoll. This is Jerry Reeves. He was the longtime president of Dallas Seminary Foundation. Johnny Coons, one of the first board members. Now, I did not know who this was. Anybody? Charlie, I, I, I mean, I know who it is now, but <laughs> when, I saw, when I first saw the picture, I was like, who is that? <laughs> Don't tell him I said that, okay? <laughs> Charlie Dyer. And then uh, this is Larry Job, and I just mentioned Jack Turpin, who is with us today. Jack was, uh, I think, along with Norm Miller, uh, one of the two people that signed the uh, original uh, incorporating documents of the foundation. This is Wendell Johnston, who is also with us today, Dr. Johnston. And then there's Dr. Campbell and Joe Hansen, who's one of the board members that was um, introduced just a minute ago. Here's a list of all the, cur the current and former board members. Um, many folks have served uh, for the benefit of the foundation, and we appreciate them so much. I did want to mention Jerry Reeves. Uh, Jerry was the longtime president of the foundation, and much of what the, what the seminary is benefiting from today is because of the work that Jerry and the team that he assembled at the time, what they did during that 20-year period. Nobody's laughing at that picture. <laughs> this is a, a picture of the foundation team in 1992. And I put that up there for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, this gentleman here in the bottom of the picture is Greg Ring. And he was one of the uh, folks that, that approached the seminary about founding the foundation and uh, got the ear of Dr. Campbell and Mr. Turpin and Norm Miller and a few others. And uh, they began this journey. There's a picture of Jerry and this guy right here. <laughs> Doug McKinnon, please stand up. You, you and Charlie Dyer should get together. You know, just as uh, hairstyles have changed, so has our logo changed. That's the original logo of the Dallas Seminary Foundation. Apparently, they didn't have any small D's or small Y's. And then it evolved into this, which was, uh, I guess, pretty classy. But we look like this today. Uh, we tried to replicate uh, the seminary's logo, and we liked the color a little better. So uh, that's where we are today. So what does DSF do? What does the foundation do? Uh, we've got a short uh, video that I'd like you all to watch. Founded in 1924, the mission of Dallas Theological Seminary is to glorify God by equipping godly servant leaders for the proclamation of His Word and the building up of the body of Christ worldwide. 
In other words, we want to help men and women fulfill the Great Commission and the Great Commandment, or more simply put, teach truth, love well. Dallas Seminary Foundation was created to support the mission of Dallas Theological Seminary by offering charitable planned giving and other related services to friends of the seminary. The foundation will help you create a legacy that will last for generations to come. There are many ways that your legacy of giving helps secure the future of training servant leaders in biblical truths, and we're happy to talk through those with you. Our planned giving website features valuable ideas and helpful articles, which focus on benefits such as organizing your finances and estate, tax savings, and life income planning. For example, you may want more information on how to donate a charitable gift through a bequest to Dallas Seminary, or perhaps you'd like to receive lifetime income through a gift annuity. Whatever the request, our team of professionals can assist you with these and other charitable planning decisions while helping you meet your family's future goals. If you would like to receive our latest planning information, we offer a free e-newsletter with many ideas that can help you both now and in the future. You may subscribe to the e-newsletter on the front page of our website. Be sure to view the online wills planner where you may organize your thoughts about extending your legacy and then share that information with a qualified attorney to finalize your lifetime plan. Also, please feel free to contact us for confidential financial advice. We are here to assist you in making the right decision at the right time for you and your family. Thank you, allowing us the opportunity to serve you. Your support helps us secure the future of Dallas Theological Seminary. Because of generous giving from men and women like you, we are able to fulfill our mission and see well-trained servant leaders investing their lives around the globe for the proclamation of His Word. Well, I'm really glad I wasn't wearing the same tie that I had on that video. <laughs> it happens. So let's, uh, let's explore a couple of things. Uh, to the students, uh, I made reference a minute ago that many of you may not even know what the foundation does. Well, one of my goals today is that when you walk out, not only will you know what we do now, but you'll realize that we can do stuff for you once you graduate. So uh, that's a very important aspect of the foundation's mission, which is uh, the mission is to support the mission of DTS by offering planned giving and other related services to friends of the seminary. Friends of the seminary includes uh, ministries uh, where our DTS alumni serve and their churches. We educate people about ways they can support DTS and other ministries with a planned gift. A planned gift is different from a current gift. Current gift, you pull out your checkbook or you go online and you fill out your credit card information. A planned gift is a gift set up now that is funded in the future from a person's will or estate or trust, a retirement account, an insurance policy, or a gift annuity. We are very fortunate here because we have lots of folks uh, who have worked with us to set up a planned gift. So why do planned giving? Well, it's really quite simple. Uh, after decades of study, DTS professors determined that you cannot do this right here. <laughs> I, I hate to break the news <laughs> to you, but you can't take it with you. It's a fact. So let's explore a few verses that explain why planned giving is important. First, the first thing we need to, we need to do is we need to acknowledge that God owns everything. Psalm 24.1 says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Job 41.11, Everything under heaven belongs to me. The land is mine and you reside in my land as foreigners and strangers. Second, let's recognize that God supplies all our needs. Matthew 6.31-33 says, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat or what shall we drink? What shall we wear? But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Philippians 4.19, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And Romans 8.32, 8 
He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? He truly supplies all of our needs. And finally, we have a duty to be faithful with these gifts that he's blessed us with. 1 Corinthians 4.2, Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. In Matthew 25, 21, his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have, been a f- you have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. At the foundation, we provide assistance with a lot of different things. And I'm going to give you a list here. We help folks plan a future gift from their will. We set up charitable gift annuities. We administer donor-advised funds and charitable remainder trust. We establish scholarships. We're going to talk a little bit more about scholarships. Uh, All the students just woke up when I said that. (laughs) We're going to talk about, or we also help with IRA charitable rollovers, estate plan reviews, and the disposition of gifted assets. I didn't put this in the... uh, presentation, but I was just reminded a couple of years ago, we were gifted a 53-acre tract of land in Granbury, Texas, which we just sold uh, last month, generating about $800,000 for the benefit of the seminary. Last year, from our donor-advised fund accounts, we actually processed over 1,700 grant payments, totaling $9.7 million. Now, donor-advised funds are funds that we have set up that Uh, an account that a donor will set up with us, and we hold the money until they tell us what to do with it. Last year, we sent $1.6 million to DTS from those funds. We sent $7 million to other ministries. And that was one of the uh, original ideas when the foundation was formed, that we would facilitate things like that. So let's talk about passion and commitment. We're all about passion and commitment here. Look at this right here. I know you can't read this. What is that? That is a list of donations that a gentleman made over a 40-year period. He lived up in Washington State. Uh, His average gift was probably about $40 a month that he uh, gave for over 40 years. Are we not working now? Can we get some help? There we go. Oh, well, let's back up. Yeah, here we go. 40 years of giving. It was over 400 gifts. Totaled about $21,000. About two months before he passed away, I had the uh, privilege of talking to this gentleman. And he called to tell us that he was leaving us in his will. And no one had ever talked to him from DTS. And it turns out that his gift to us was over two and a half million dollars. That two and a half million dollars will go into the scholarship fund. At a five percent pay rate, two and a half million dollars generates one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars a year in scholarship assistance. So, with one gift, with one committed gift from a very committed donor to DTS, he set up support for students into perpetuity at the rate of $125,000 a year, six times the amount he had given during his lifetime. That is passion and commitment. So what are you passionate about or committed to? I'm not trying to compare you to the gentleman from Washington, but uh, in a room like this, most everybody would raise their hand and say, yeah, I'm passionate, committed to Jesus Christ. Their spouse, if you're married, your family, your church family, And I've also heard uh, specifically here that many students are committed to avoiding one of Dr. Wallace's (laughs) Greek classes. Can I get an amen on that? I always wanted to say that in chapel. Well, what about Bob? Let's consider Bob. Kim Till's rolling her eyes down here because she's heard this about 20 times. So Bob... There was this uh, estate planning attorney, and uh, he related this story uh, one time about a gentleman who called him up, 
said he needed to come visit with him, uh, needed to set up a will. The man shows up, and the attorney says, well, tell me about yourself. He's about 70 years old. And uh, Bob says, well, I'm, uh, I've been a fairly successful businessman. I've made a lot of money. I've started and sold a lot of businesses. He said, I've also been married uh, three times, and I've, I'm divorced three times. I have eight children. I have uh, 20 grandchildren, and um, I have a lot of assets. The attorney says, okay, well, why are you here? He says, well, I don't have a will. And uh, the attorney looks at him. He says, well, what do you mean you don't have a will? You're 70 years old. You've got three ex-wives. You've got eight children. You've got 20 grandchildren. You're worth hundreds of millions of dollars. What are you thinking? Bob just looks at him. He kind of leans back in his chair, and this is what he says. He says, BDC, BBD. Attorney just looks at him. He said, what do you mean, BDC, BBD? Bob says, Bob don't care. Bob be dead. <laughs> Apparently, Bob wasn't passionate about or committed to anything. Fortunately for us, we get to deal every day with people who are passionate about and committed to the Lord's work. They're committed to the Word, and they're committed to uh, helping make it easier for students to attend DTS because they are passionate and committed to DTS. Let's talk about legacy planning for a minute. We have a program here called the Lewis Berry Chafer Program, and it's where we honor those who have told us that they have made a planned gift, a future planned gift to uh, Dallas Seminary Foundation, uh, mostly for the benefit of Dallas Seminary. Right now, we've got 450 members of our Lewis Sperry Chafer program. Uh, we have been told by those folks that we've got about 170 million uh, in gifts that are coming. About 80% uh, of that is planning to come to DTS. About 30% is going to other ministries. That's one of the things that we do here at the foundation. You know, as far as legacy goes, Ecclesiastes 111 says, No one remembers the former generations. Even those yet to come will not be remembered by those who follow them. How many of you believe that? All right. If you don't believe that, I'm about to prove it to you. <laughs> Consider your grandfather's grandfathers. Okay, think about that. Those are your great, great grandfathers. How many do you have? Quick. Oh, come on. You, how many? You've got eight. You have eight great, great grandfathers. Now think back to the verse I just read you from Ecclesiastes. How many of those eight great, great grandfathers can you name? Robert Murkison, you can. Okay, you see me afterwards, okay? <laughs> I'm going to give you a little bit different perspective. How many of you here have grandchildren? Okay. Yay. Okay. Are any of them as cute as this one? <laughs> okay, I know. It's, it's shameless, but had to do it. Seriously, do you know the names of your grandchildren? Yeah. Okay, good. Do you know the names of your two grandfathers? Okay, so you know your grandchild's name and you know your grandfather's names. You are now right in the middle of that uh, great, great grandfather or grandmother uh, diagram there. Do your grandkids know your grandfather's names? Okay, same relationship, the great, great grandfather thing. So, will your grandchildren's grandchildren know your name? No, oh, we've just seen. You all didn't know your great-great-grandfather's name, so it's probably unrealistic to expect that your great-great-grandchildren will know your name because you're going to be one of those eight great-great-grandparents one of these days. So here's the question. It may not be important to you that they know your name, but do you want them to know what was important to you? That's what legacy planning is all about. You're trying to communicate to future generations what 
is important to you. So a great way for someone to extend or expand their legacy of giving to DTS is by endowing a scholarship. So let's look at what's happened at the scholarship fund here at DTS. 17 years ago, we, the fund had a little bit less than $4 million in. Two years later, it was about $7 million. Two years later, it was a little over 10. In 2008, we were pushing $16 million. Here's a chart that shows the growth of the scholarship fund since we began the Centennial Campaign. And for those of you who don't know, we're right in the middle now of a 15-year Centennial Campaign leading up to the 100th anniversary of the seminary. In the first phase of the Centennial Campaign, we increased the scholarship fund from $20 million up to almost $37 million. We're in the second phase now, and the scholarship account is a little north of $43 million. So since the Centennial Campaign began seven years ago, we've doubled the balance in the scholarship fund, and that's a long-term goal is to keep increasing the, the scholarship fund. One way to do that is through what the foundation is doing with our donor base, communicating to them what's important. So how do all these current gifts and planned gifts impact you as a student at Dallas Seminary? Well, let's take a look. This year's budget, the expenses basically can be uh, divided up into three categories. Salaries and uh, we're, we're, the total budget for expenses is about $33 million. Salaries and benefits are about 71% of that total, and about 30% are just the operating expenses, the lights and the maintenance and debt service on the, uh, the two uh, dorms that we have over here. On the revenue side, again, about $33 million, uh, the other uh, expenses, the other, the other, I'm sorry, other revenues, rent from the dorms is about $3 million. And then you can see here that we get gifts from our supporters. Uh, budget this year is a little over $8 million. Let's look at the growth of gifts to the general fund over the year. Going back to 2000, a little more than $4 million in current gifts to Dallas Seminary. You can see that it rose up until 2008, 2009, and then there was a drop. That was when we had the last financial crisis, and we've slowly built back up so that this year we're, we're back up to a budget of a little about $8.5 million. That $8.5 million is about one-fourth of the revenue that the seminary receives. About 64% comes from tuition. So let's look at tuition. How is tuition broken out? $21 million in tuition, and about 60% of that is paid directly by you, the students. But look over here. Student scholarships now comprise about 22% of the total tuition that Dallas Seminary receives. So you saw a second ago how that scholarship fund is growing, growing, growing every year. That's one of the goals. That's what the foundation is doing, along with the advancement team, is that we're trying to grow that scholarship funds so that more and more students can benefit. The enrollment here at DTS has grown every year for the last few years. One of the reasons is because we have scholarship assistance. Not everybody would be here if they didn't have scholarship assistance. So that's a primary goal. We're almost done. So as a DTS graduate, how can Dallas Seminary Foundation help you? You've already seen how we help supporters of Dallas Seminary. How can we help the graduates? Well, it's in our mission statement. Once you graduate, well, I guess you're a friend right now, but once you graduate, you're certainly a friend of Dallas Seminary. And we can help you with planned giving services. We can, we can be a resource for you. Uh, once you're in a church or in a, you're in a ministry organization, you can call upon us. We will help you with planned giving awareness among your church members or your ministry supporters. Uh, we can help you with funds management. We do that right now for a number of ministries. They collect money. They don't have a, a way to invest it. We have a pretty professional, professionally managed uh, different funds, our donor advised funds, our scholarship fund. We actually hold on to money for other ministries and give it back to them when they need it. We can set up gift annuity programs to benefit a church or a ministry. We, we do that quite a bit. 
So we're here to really help you, the supporters and the grads of DTS, with all of your planned giving needs because we've been doing it for 30 years. So that's it. Hope that helped all of you understand a little bit more about Dallas Seminary Foundation, where we've been, where we are, where we're going, how it benefits you as a future grad, and all the donors that are here today, we thank you so much for putting your faith and trust in us, and we thank you for your support of DTS and the board members as well. Let's, uh, let's bow for prayer here. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness to Dallas Seminary. Thank you for uh, honoring the efforts of those here who want to honor you. We praise you for 30 years of the foundation, and we praise you for uh, the 94 years of Dallas Seminary. May you be honored in all that we do. We thank you for everyone who has come before us that has brought us to this point, and we pray that you'll continue to bless us as we continue to work toward your uh, goals for us. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.